Over the past year, I've posted many videos on this YouTube channel highlighting the opportunity that's today present in the REIT sector. In short, REIT share prices have crashed even as most of them kept growing their cash flows and as a result, real estate investment trusts are today priced at their lowest valuations in a decade. But that does not mean that all REITs are worth buying. This is a vast and versatile sector with over 200 companies and quite a few of them still remain overpriced today. Hey everyone, this is Jules here, I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. In today's video, I want to talk to you about two REITs that remain overpriced and I would consider selling. And then I will also highlight two better alternatives for you to consider. If you like this type of content, make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm planning to do a more detailed video on each of these REITs discussed in this video. And also, if you want to support the channel, it would really help me a lot if you click the like button. Thank you so much in advance. So the first REIT that I would consider selling is called Iron Mountain. Its symbol is IRM. This is a REIT that specializes in paper storage facilities and it's not a business that I would describe as particularly attractive. I don't think that paper is going to become obsolete anytime soon or that this business will collapse overnight it will likely keep doing relatively well for a long time to come but it's also clear that this is not a growth sector and over time we will print less and store more documents digitally instead. I know this from my personal experience running a small investment company. I used to print quite a lot of documents just five to ten years ago but today I don't even own a printer anymore and so when I need to print something I'll go to a print shop but that's very rare these days. So being a read that specializes in paper storage facilities is not particularly attractive. I think that this is going to remain a cash cow for the REIT but this is not a growth sector and eventually I would expect the growth even to turn negative. And then the second thing that I dislike about this REIT is that it actually doesn't own all of its properties. In many cases it will instead lease them on a long-term basis and only own the metal racks inside the buildings which I use to store the paper documents. And there are three problems with that. The first thing is that the REIT won't participate in the long-term appreciation of its real estate as much as some other REITs would. Then the second issue is that it will have to keep paying growing rents for its properties even as eventually the growth of its same property NY likely turns negative. And then the third thing here to consider is that it also won't have an alternative use for its assets eventually if paper becomes obsolete or at least less desirable, less used by businesses. Then a third issue of Iron Mountain that you should consider is that it generates about 40% of its revenue from services. This is quite unusual for REIT but it turns quite a bit from paper shredding paper transportation, things like this and these services are a bit more volatile than typical rental income. But despite all of these negative factors, Iron Mountain is today priced at about 24 times FFO, which is a steep premium relative to the average of the REIT sector. It's priced at such a high valuation relative to other REITs because it has resisted the recent crash of the REIT sector and kept pushing new all-time highs. I think that what happened here is that Iron Mountain got caught in the AI hype that pushed a lot of stocks like Nvidia to a much higher level. In a way, Iron Mountain has become the Nvidia of the REIT sector and this is because it's rapidly growing a data center business today. It's building a lot of new data center facilities. Those are performing really well. It's growing their FFO per share and the REIT market is very optimistic about these projects. But I think that the market has gotten a bit ahead of itself here because the data center business today still only generates about 10% of the company's revenue. And so the majority of it, about 90%, is still coming from the paper storage business. Therefore, I don't think it's appropriate to price Iron Mountain as if it was a data center read today. Again, only about 10% of its business is data centers. The remaining is a non-gross business, the paper storage. And actually, if you compare its valuation today to some other data center rates like digital realty it's even priced at a small premium relative to them and so if you want to invest in data centers I would much rather buy something like digital realty. It is true that Iron Mountain may have slightly better near-term growth prospects but here you need to remember that REITs should be priced based on decades of expected future cash flow and so once you take that into account its valuation really makes little sense in my opinion. Paying 24 times FFO for quasi paper storage REIT in a 5 plus percent interest rate environment is just excessive in my opinion. If you want to invest in a discounted growth REIT, I think that Crown Castle, ticker symbol CCI, would be a much better alternative. 
Crown Castle is a blue chip cell tower rate that has historically traded at a much higher valuation than Iron Mountain during most times because it has better growth prospects, it has a better track record, a stronger balance sheet. But despite that, it's today priced at now at a much lower valuation. That's because the share price of Crown Castle has crashed with the rest of the REIT sector, even as Iron Mountain kept on rising. And so today you can exceptionally buy it at a lower valuation than Iron Mountain. Crown Castle actually dropped quite a bit more than even the average of the REIT sector because it's going to suffer headwinds in the coming two years that will cause its cash flow to stagnate. But beyond that, we expect its growth to return to its historic 7 to 8% per year, which is more than what Iron Mountain will be able to keep up over the long run. Despite that, you can today buy Crown Castle at a 10 turn lower FFO multiple and its dividend yield is near 6%. As usual, it appears that the market only cares about the short run here. And so since Crown Castle will have some difficulties over the next two years, it has been priced at a very low valuation. And on the flip side, as Iron Mountain is now enjoying strong growth prospects, it's been priced at a very high valuation. But again, if you value these REITs based on their expected cash flow over multiple decades, I think that Crown Castle is the real opportunity here here and Iron Mountain is a bit overpriced. Before I go into the second read I would consider selling, please let me know in the comment section below what are your favorite reads to buy today. So the second read that I would consider selling is called Well Tower, ticker symbol W-E-L-L. -L. This is a read that I owned for many years, but I sold it fairly recently as it was approaching near all-time highs. This is a blue chip healthcare read that specializes mainly in senior housing, but also in medical office buildings. And it's today priced at a roughly 24 times FFO, which is a 10 turn higher multiple than its close peer Venta sticker symbol VTR. And that's despite being fairly similar companies. I really have a hard time explaining the huge discrepancy in their valuations because both companies are large cap healthcare REITs that focus mostly on senior housing. They both have strong investment grade rates in balance sheets, they both have blue chip reputations and they both have exceptional track records. It is true that Well Tower has slightly better growth prospects in the near term, but as we mentioned already earlier, this really shouldn't have such a big impact on your valuation since in an efficient market, what matters is the long-term prospects of the REIT. And it's interesting to note here that Land and Buildings, which is one of the biggest REIT activist investment firms, has recently initiated a large position in Ventas and been making the case that this valuation spread shouldn't be this big. Just to close the gap in terms of the valuations, the share price of Ventas would need to rise by about 50% now to catch up to Well Tower. While you wait for this, you earn a roughly 4% dividend yield and the company keeps on growing at a solid pace. So for these reasons, I think that Ventas is a much better opportunity than Well Tower today. But even then, I'm not buying Ventas either because I think that there are even better opportunities today in the healthcare REIT sector. And if you want to access my entire real money REIT portfolio, you can join my REIT newsletter High Yield Landlord for a two week free trial. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. And otherwise, once more, I will really appreciate it if you click the subscribe and the like buttons. That helps me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much in advance and see you at my next one. Bye-bye.